Okay, welcome to your King 225 lecture for Monday, February 22nd. Some announcements for you. Um, your third lab is this week. It's the lab on electromyography or EMG. So you should be uh, familiar with that topic already. There's no lab next week. And the reason I don't have labs scheduled for next week is because your midterm exam is on Wednesday. So this is the composition of your midterm exam. Going to be 50 multiple choice questions worth one mark each and five short answer questions worth two marks each. Um, the midterm covers material up to and including Wednesday, February 24th. So that's this Wednesday. And you will have 48 hours to write the exam. So it's a take home exam. Uh, I'll be flexible with that. So if you're a little bit over time, that's going to be okay. But it's designed to be an, an exam that you can write in about one hour. Or so I think uh, giving you 48 hours is lots of time for this one. Um, and you can simply send me your answers by email. So you can see my email address at the bottom of the slide. <clears throat> one, other announcement, one other announcement is that your final exam is Monday, April 26th. Again, it's a take home exam uh, and you have 48 hours for that exam as well. Today's class, I'm going to start off with a review of slides we didn't cover last class. So these are slides I posted last day um, and I'm going to go over the ones that we, we didn't cover. Um, that includes a review of the Golgi tendon organ and muscle spindle and also the concept of efferent and afferent. And then later on in this lecture, the main topic will be the bilateral deficit. And that's also the topic of your fourth lab. So I ended, up, I ended the last class with this question. Uh, sometimes when falling asleep in class, one's head will slowly hang down and then snap back up without conscious effort. What reflex has been elicited? Um, in this case, it's the stretch reflex. So when your head is bobbing down while you're falling asleep, you're stretching the muscles on the back of your neck that activates the stretch reflex. The stretch reflex sends excitation to the spinal cord, to the motor neuron that controls that muscle. And that motor neuron will then cause activation of that neck extensor muscle and cause your neck to, to snap back up. The second question had to do with um, a receptor in the quadriceps that the skier would want to inhibit during her performance and why she would want to inhibit this, this receptor. This receptor would be the Golgi tendon organ. So the Golgi tendon organ, if it's activated in, this, in the quadriceps, it's gonna cause your quadriceps to relax and it's gonna cause the hamstrings to contract. So if the hamstrings contract on her landing, um, it's gonna cause knee flexion and she's gonna end up falling. Um, the same with if her quadriceps relaxes, um, her quadriceps won't be able to provide knee extension uh, to prevent her from falling. So um, she would want to override that Golgi tendon organ reflex to keep the quadriceps contracted and to prevent excess of contraction of the hamstrings. So um, a couple of multiple choice questions here. So you can use your higher brain centers to override the Golgi tendon organ inhibition of motor neurons. Is this true or false? This would be true. So you can actually use your higher brain centers to override most of your reflexes. Uh, during which exercise would you want to activate the muscle spindle? So jumping for a rebound in basketball, training for flexibility while using static stretching or training for flexibility using PNS stretching or all of the above. The correct answer here would be A. It's jumping for a rebound in basketball. So when you activate the stretch reflex, the muscle spindle, um, that causes reflex contraction of the muscle. So if you're jumping for a rebound in basketball, you're first going to do kind of a counter movement jump where you go down a bit before you jump up for the rebound. And that's going to induce that rapid stretch that's gonna activate the muscle spindle and cause you to have a higher jump for that rebound in basketball. So the muscle spindle is re really important for sports that involve a lot of jumping and, and power output. The other two, you would want to inhibit your 
stretch reflex if you're doing any type of stretching exercise because you don't want your muscle contracting while you're trying to stretch it. Um, Golgi tendon organ or muscle spindle, which would you want to activate and which would you want to inhibit if your goal was to improve flexibility by stretching exercises? So the Golgi tendon organ causes reflex relaxation of the muscle, which is good for stretching, whereas the spindle causes reflex contraction, which is, which is counterproductive to stretching. So you want to activate your GTO and inhibit your muscle spindle. Which receptor would you want to inhibit if you're experiencing muscle cramp? The correct answer here is your muscle spindle. So during a muscle cramp, it's an involuntary muscle contraction. Your spindle is firing like crazy and it's causing this painful reflex contraction of the muscle. So if you stretch the, the cramp, if you stretch the muscle that's cramping, it further fatigues the spindle, it activates the spindle and it fatigues it and it alleviates the muscle cramp. The second question, which receptor would you want to activate and which would you want to inhibit if you want to exert maximal power? Uh, so exert uh, high force at high velocity. This would be activating the spindle to get that reflex contraction, that stretch reflex. And you'd want to inhibit the GTO, which usually inhibits your muscle contraction. This question has to do with efferent versus afferent input. So if you call, recall, afferent means going back to the central nervous system from your receptors, and efferent means going from the central nervous system. In, in muscle physiology, it refers to going from the central nervous system to your muscles. So the first one, your eyes transmit a signal to your brain about the position of a soccer ball. That would be afferent. You're going from your receptor back to your central nervous system. Voluntary contraction of your biceps by recruitment of motor neurons in the spinal cord, that would be efferent. Golgi tendon is activated, sending inhibitory signal to the spinal cord. This would be afferent. Vestibular sensors in your ear send a message to your brain to correct your balance. So the vestibular Vestibular receptors in your ears are important for balance maintenance. Uh, again, this is going from a receptor back to the central nervous system. So this is afferent. And then reflex contraction of a muscle after spindle activation. This is both afferent and efferent. So the afferent part is the activation of the muscle spindle. That's going to send uh, excitation to the spinal cord and that's gonna cause uh, activation of the motor unit in the spinal cord and then contraction of the muscle. So the contraction of uh, the muscle from the signal in the spinal cord is the efferent part, whereas the spindle sending a message back to the spinal cord is your afferent.